Now that the overall shape of the stadium is complete, let's use that same object to derive some of the framing members from it. One way we can do this is to uh, simply use the existing geometry itself to, der to derive paths. For example, we can uh, simply click on the edges of the opening for the roof, and then using the derivative tool we can derive spline curves which match that edge exactly. And then we'll simply draw a 2D cross section, for example this uh, rectangular shape, and have it sweep along those paths. One other way of creating some of these framing members would be to uh, cut some 2D cross sections. Now in the, previous, uh, in the previous example we did a 3D section cut. In this case we're going to use uh, the section tool, but we're going to do a 2D section cut which will give us a 2D profile through our object. Now uh, these are profiles that could be used for construction documentation. And we can cut uh, using planes or lines in any orientation. And then what we'll do with these uh, 2D cross sections that we have is we will then uh, sweep a 2D cross section across them. Now instead of sweeping them individually one by one, we'll actually write a little script utility which can automate the process for us using the SDK environment in Formsy. So we can just have it automatically sweep across all the highlighted lines. One other example would be to uh, orientate a 3D plane anywhere that we want, cutting at a certain angle through our object. And then I'll rotate and copy that multiple times. So let's copy it seven times, evenly space it. And then what we'll do is uh, take all of those planes that we have and we will temporarily uh, join all those planes uh, and sort of group those together as one object. And then using the line of intersection tool, which is sort of like the section tool, except what it does is just drive the line of intersection of any two objects. So here we can actually find the line of intersection of where all those planes cut through the outer surface of our form. Now with all these profiles, once again we highlight those and run our little utility to sweep a cross section across all those lines in one single operation. We can also use the animation tools in Formsy for generating geometry and exploring different shapes. For example, what we can do is uh, maybe uh, animate something as simple as a box. And we can use uh, the keyframe animation in Formsy just to sort of tell that object where we want it to be at certain points in time. So we just have the box move and rotate across the 3D form of our stadium. And then what we can do is with this animated object there's an extract animation tool. And we can extract that animated object at a specific interval spacing. So it's, if it's a 12 second animation we can extract it every one second to get 12 objects. And then we use the line of intersection tool to drive a series of profiles of where it cuts through the object. And then use our script utility to sweep a cross section across all those derived lines. So there's sort of some random framing members there. We can also animate just parts of objects. For example, we can animate just a point or segment or face. We can also animate objects along a path. So here uh, we'll take the segment of this flat plane and we'll animate it along this outside circular path. And if I were to play that animation back, you can see that just the segment is moving along the path. Let's do the same thing with the back segment, except we'll have that animate along the inside path. And you can see that uh, we can control where the uh, animation starts and stops along the path. We extract a certain number of animated objects along that uh, animated sequence, derive the line of intersection, and take those lines and you know, sweep the cross section to give it the 3D framing aspect for the member. All right, uh, we can also introduce a level of randomness to the animation parameters. For example, we can add a noise controller which can just sort of uh, set random values uh, for the animation. For example, we can have this randomly rotate back and forth at a predefined angle. And then we extract that out at the interval that we want, maybe every one second. And then we derive the line of intersection and sweep a cross section across all of those lines. So now if we were to go back and turn on all of the other layers from all of the framing objects that were created through the derivative modeling tools and from the animation tools, we get sort of this complicated network uh, of framing elements uh, which sort of uh, give the National Beijing Stadium the nickname the bird's nest. So it's not just from the overall shape of the object but also from this random distribution of these framing elements uh, that make up the outside uh, facade of that stadium. For the stadium seating we'll just do a quick conceptual model for that. Forms has all the tools to add as much detail as you want. In this example we'll just do a quick little straight section for the seating. And then we'll apply an image map to create the seats. 
and you can apply as many different surface styles as you want to an object, to simply a color, each face of the object, a different color if we want. So here we have an image map for the facade, and we'll apply that to the side face also. If you want to control the uh, size and how it's placed onto the object, uh, there's a texture mapping tool which will let you uh, control these parameters of how it's placed on the object. Once we have these different textures on there, uh, we can still further modify that geometry. Uh, for example, I can uh, zoom in here and uh, maybe add some additional detail uh, to the facade of the seating area by uh, simply using the insertion tools and pushing and pulling uh, and adding uh, additional details into the object. So if I were to keep going, we'd end up with an object that looks uh, more like this. Just punch a few more holes in there and move a few segments and points. So there's sort of a rough approximation of the seating area for a straight section. And what we need to do is take this section and sort of have it curved uh, to sort of match uh, the uh, shape of the stadium itself. A couple different ways of doing that. Uh, there's a deformation tool which allows us to just grab hold of that geometry and we can bend it and twist it and sort of sculpt that into the shape that we want. Uh, maybe if you want more of a rectangular type shape, we can actually uh, do a bezier bend and pretty much uh, change that geometry into any uh, form that we want. Or we can also take the object and bend it along a path. So for example here, we create an elliptical path and using the pretzel tool, which is the bend along curve tool, uh, you can say I can take that object and have it bend along that path. And you can see that I can control the start and end position of where the object is placed along that path, and the path can be any open or closed shape. And if I uh, bring that path back, I can uh, apply a texture map uh, to the inside path there, maybe a aerial photograph of the field, or maybe more of a conceptual uh, type layout, maybe a sketch that we can actually uh, place onto that image there for more of an abstract type visualization of the stadium. Let's create the stairs. If I turn the uh, existing stairs on, we can see that they actually uh, follow uh, the curvature of the stadium itself and also at the same slope and angle uh, of the framing members on the outside. How is this done? Well, uh, what we'll do is we'll take the stair that's already been created for us and get rid of that. And you can see that uh, all we did was create a curved path uh, which follows the same uh, shape as the stadium. We went to the straight stair tool, set our parameters, and click on the line. And if you want to do spiral stairs, again we can just, uh, use the spiral stair tool, set the parameters, and click on a vertical line. As I said, these are controlled objects, so these uh, can be modified later as our design changes. We can simply query uh, the parameters of the stair and modify uh, any of the associated uh, parameters with that. For example, add tiles and sides and railings uh, and modify that uh, as our design changes.